Hello friends, welcome to the session. The topic we are going to discuss today is decline and resurgence of political theory. Friends, as uh, you all know, the political science is being a very old subject. There have been the stepwise step progress into the development of the subject. In the modern times, we can say the political science has been emerged as a pure science, but it also has some fundamental elements of the uh, social sciences. So if we go in directly into the introduction to the topic, political science is one of the oldest subjects, as I have already told you, and it is related with the study of statecraft, kingship, political institutions and studies on comparative politics, the politics which is going on. Uh, in the contemporary times into the different countries we study actually studies the we actually made a comparative analysis of the political situations of all the countries around the world the studies are based on the philosophical approach the normative approach and also in the modern time we utilizes the data the empirical data to to we can say to determine the decision the political decisions of the citizens all around the world so being a very old subject and being there were the step by step development into the subject, the topic itself being the decline and then the resurgence and we are talking about the modern times, but there have been the declines and resurgence into the political theories, into the study of political science, into the methods of studying the polity a lot many times. These type of situa situations have been uh, faced by the political scientists quite a few times throughout the centuries these situations these type of situations situations have been arised modern political thought the old perspectives of the study as you all know if you look at the work of Augustine, dante hannah ardent the modern thinkers and then you go back to j.s mill karl marx in Indian political thought, if you see M. N. Roy, then you see, we can say, Veer Savarkar. There have been a lot of difference in the way of looking at the politics. Some are inclined towards the behavior. Some are inclined towards the data. But there have been some, we can say, there have been some common points which are utilized by the thinkers of all the schools. Behavioralism and post-behavioralism post behavioralism are also among them and especially after the world war first world war and the second world war the, the 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 speed of the study of the political theory the concept of the political science political science they actually got speed up after the world war 1 and then suddenly after uh, we can say 20 years the world war 2 the speed has grown up okay so why there was a decline why what was the what were the reason that is why there was a decline in the political theory the approach of the political science so the modern political scientists used to think that the old perspective of the study of political science has lost it lost its relevant in the contemporary times in the contemporary times the people are much more inclined towards the data and based upon that data what were with what were what will be the decisions of the people which they made okay so the people are getting much more rational in the approach we can say the political scientists were going were getting much more rational in their approach but has that, uh, that rationality do not have, has that rationality not have any space left for the theories itself. That was the debate. And suddenly, after the decline of the political theory, there have been the resurgence of that too. David Easton, as you all know, he was uh, the president of the American political science and one of the most prominent and cited political scientists during the second half of we can say the 20th century he was a very highly valued colleague and he pointed out some we can say some drawbacks of the political theory approach he said that it is it has a very priori commitment towards certain principles there have been a lot more talk about the liberty the justice the the equality we can say these topics actually reiterate too many times in the political theory approach there has not been nothing anything new it is starts with some assumptions or postulates if you look at any political theorist 
or any political scientist of earlier or medieval period you will see that there are some some you can say he the the scientist the the political thinker is being prejudiced in his approach he have some idea into his mind and then just for the sake to justify that idea he provides some theory most of the political thought for pol centuries since ancient civilization to early years of 20th century were was normative the ideas which were we were having in the first and the second century we were also having the same in the, in the 19th or 20th century there was no change on those ideas okay and it it is not inclusive in nature the theory of we can say the the political histories are political theories are not contemporary they are just they are just getting older as per the development of the times and he also characterizes the political writers they have they are just the historical development of ideas they are not the breakthrough things they are not innovative things in their nature they are just the step by step development of the ideas they have belief in the speculation they used to speculate things and they then make their assumptions and dependability on old ideas the political writers the political theories are much more dependent on the old ideas okay so this is the critique of the political theories and that is why it has declined it lost it its relevance in the mid 20th century just after the second world war okay so as i was telling you the reasons it has priori commitment to a certain principle it is start with some assumption and just to uh, uh, just to justify that assumption the political theorists the political thinker provide you some provide you with some theories most of the political thought for centuries since ancient to civilization to early years they were the same throughout the period political theory usually meant to be comprehensive and inclusive of a system they were too committed to a particular system okay so if the political theory approach was having so many drawbacks then why it got resurgence as you know the name of the topic is itself the decline and then its resurgence so the reason of the decline are the same as i told you okay these are the reasons now what are the reasons for the resurgence of the political theory so can we can we can we we can say can we just eliminate the political theory approach no we cannot it also has some we can say relevance and until and unless we do not criticize anything we could we can we, we do not uh, we can say look at the things in a different way we do not find uh, 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 the importance of that thing so the thinkers like plaminards weldon and others established that political theory in its traditional sense was never dead he said that when you applying the technology when you applying the data based approach when you applying the we can say the modern approach of towards the political science you are not actually eliminating the political theory approach you are doing what you are actually providing an extension to that approach using the tools you are having okay so the speculative theory except the utopia utopia utopian one the utopian theory we can say we also pro, uh, depict it as the ram rajya the, the welfare state in which there have been a welfare of all the human being so it was the except the utopian one all other important theories have proved their relevance proved their importance in the contemporary times the thinking provided by the old thinkers from the early to the medieval century and their thinking happens to be true in the future whatever the events they have been speculated whatever the result they have speculated in the past about different type of kingship about different type of states they happens to be true similarly isaiah berun observed that without some general outlook or philosophy there can be no human activity 
he actually provide a very very basic thing he said that if you are looking at something you have to have some we can say you 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 have to be prejudiced in your nature until and unless you are not having any idea about that thing whether it is right or wrong it's a different thing but you have to have some idea about it and then based upon the tools you are having you can actually make an analysis okay so this was the resurgence yes there was a decline but as i as i uh, you can also read in the behavioralism and the post behavioralism thing the behavioralism being the study of the behavior of the people on the basis of which they make their political decisions but as soon as the behavioralism comes into the picture the same the scientist who propagates the theory of behavioralism they also declines it decline it and they provides provide it post behavioralism which have both the ideas the behavioristic ideas and the normative approach so okay so there has been a very fast paradigm shift into the studies of political science now we will study the correlation between the political theory and the modern empirical database approach of the political science the political theories which derived in the past were also based on the observation of people we cannot say that whatever the political thinkers like socrates aristotle j s mill dante whatever they have provided us that was actually voluntary no they they they, they come they came to those result based upon the result were based upon the observation of the people okay those were not the mere speculation they have some basis data basis for that and no record and data sets are available in this regard but the decisions were based on the study of large study of masses okay and the concept of justice which was derived in the in the first or second century the concept of liberty the concept of democracy we can say these are all the concept which found their foundation in the early period but they are as relevant as they were then and they are now okay so the modern approach cannot we can say replace these things okay the modern approach cannot replace these concepts but of course it can provide much more rationality much more correction we can say okay it, it, it much more clarity okay so the modern approach based on the empirical data based approach where you gather data whether you determine their decision on different ins instances whatever the decision an individual will make these type of things will actually complement your approach of political theory so both of the these thing both of these things when combined with each other will provide much more comprehensive study so now i think you may have understand what is the decline and resurgence of the political theory the the reasons of the decline were as i told you the david easton has also uh, provided those those were based on the very old ideas assumptions okay a priori commitment to the certain principles most of the political science uh, or political thoughts were very old and they are they were prejudiced in their nature but that doesn't make it all wrong okay then there was a resurgence so now there are some important questions which may be asked from you in your examination the development of political science as a subject whether it's a social science or pure science the questions uh, from uh, uh, this domain have been asked quite a few times that uh, how the actually the political science the subject itself change its faces on the basis of the approach you are making towards it if you are making a, a normative approach then it becomes social science if you are making a we can say the data based approach you gather data determine decision it it turns into a pure science importance of empirical data in studying the political behavior and politics very important and especially now in the modern times when there has been advent of social media people are actually providing their referendum towards the policies of the government towards the steps any government take in the world the people are providing their opinion every time so the governments can shape their policies in that way so what you need is data 
Third one, the new approach of political science is much more concentrated on application of political theories rather than establishing new one. So, what were what were the reasons of resurgence of political theory approach? This new approach of database, empirical database approach wasn't able to provide any new theory. It was actually either proving the political theories which were which were established in the past or it was it was uh, neglecting those. But it was not providing any new theory. Okay, that is why the political theories were important and the database approach actually complement them. So that's all for the day. Thank you.